Hi, and welcome to the Dynamics of Persuasion, Processing Persuasive Communications. Here's our agenda. We're going to discuss some historical foundations, the elaboration likelihood model or theory, inoculation theory, and a brief review. The historical foundations of this research begins with the Yale model of persuasion. They were interested in who said what to whom with what effect. To be persuaded, individuals had to attend to, comprehend, learn, accept, and retain the message. The more people learn and comprehend message arguments, the more likely they are to accept and advocate positions. So it starts with communication, which leads to message learning. And within message learning, you have attention, comprehension, learning, acceptance, and retention, and that results in attitude change. The next approach was the cognitive response approach. This asserts that people's own mental reactions to a message play a critical role in the persuasion process. And this, in some cases, can be more important than the message itself. Cognitive responses include thoughts that are favorable to those positions advocated in the message, in other words, pro-arguments, and those that criticize the message, in other words, counter-arguments. Persuasion occurs if the communicator generates a favorable cognitive response from the audience members. So in the cognitive response model of persuasion, again, we begin with communication, and we have cognitive responses, which include Pro-arguments, counter-arguments, and thoughts that originate with the message, creatively elaborate on the message, or are irrelevant to the message. And these then lead to attitude change. Forewarning. This occurs when a persuader warns people that they will soon be exposed to a persuasive communication. Individuals generate a large number of counterarguments, strengthening their opposition to the advocated position. This reduces the likelihood that subsequent persuasive communication will succeed. Distraction. Here, people are distracted from paying attention to a communication with which they disagree. People can become highly susceptible to persuasion, and this facilitates persuasion by blocking the dominant cognitive response to a message. Using humor, music, and sex to take people's attention away from the message are all examples of distraction. The Elaboration Likelihood Model This model tells us when people should be particularly likely to elaborate. There are two distinct ways people process communication, the central route and the peripheral route. The central route is characterized by considerable cognitive elaboration. When we use the central route, we carefully evaluate message arguments. We ponder communicators' ideas. We relate information to our own knowledge and values. The peripheral route is different. Here, we examine a message quickly or focus on simple cues to help decide whether to accept the position advocated in the message or reject it. Weak arguments like physical appeal and speaking style are more influential in the peripheral route. An important construct here is motivation process. In other words, your involvement and the personal relevance. As motivation decreases, the more likely you are to take the peripheral route. The same can be said for ability. Ability is the knowledge and the ability to process information. The less your motivation and ability, the more likely you are to take the peripheral route. Inoculation theory argues that exposure to a weak dose of opposition arguments, strong enough to stimulate defenses but not strong enough to overwhelm, should produce the mental equivalent of antibodies. In other words, counterarguments. So this works just like a vaccination in your body. Counter-arguing the oppositional message in one's own mind should lead to the strengthening of initial attitude and increased resistance to persuasion. So here's where we've been. 
How does the inoculation theory work? When might people use central versus peripheral processing? Would a persuasive speaker want to use for one? Why? How does the use of distraction work to increase susceptibility to persuasive messages?